Hello, good day. Today we are moving into topic three of introductory finance, which focuses on bond investment. What is a bond? What are the rational and concern in bond investment? This video will introduce bond to you. At the end of this learning session, students will be able to understand and describe the general features of bonds. You will also be able to understand the common concept of bond and identify the different types of bonds. This will prepare you to bond pricing and valuation in the upcoming videos. Stay tuned and let's learn together! A bond is also known as fixed income security as it has a claim on specified periodic stream of income. Bond is a long-term debt instrument issued by a corporation or government to borrow money for long periods. It is a long-term contract under which a borrower agrees to make payments of interest and principal on specific dates to the holders of the bond. Long term means more than a year. The bondholders, who are the lenders, receive future periodic coupon payments and the principal on maturity date. The coupon interest rate can be either at a fixed or floating rate of interest. What is the rationale for bond investment? What are the advantages enjoyed by bondholders? Bond has lower risk than common stock. Payments of coupon and power value are both scheduled and specified contractually. Bonds provide a predictable and more stable income stream. So, bondholders know exactly how much money they will be paid and when. Bonds are generally viewed as safer investment than stocks. Historically, the bond market has been less vulnerable to price swings or volatility than the stock market. The coupon interest payments received by bondholders are independent of a firm's earning. This is because bond is an IOU between the lender and borrower that includes the details of the loan and its payments. Owners of bonds are debt holders. They are paid in interest rather than profits. Bondholders have senior claim in the case of bankruptcy and enjoy a measure of legal protection. If a company goes bankrupt, its bondholder will often receive some money back. Bondholders have priority over shareholders in the line to be paid. Common stockholders are the last to be paid from the liquidating company's assets. Lastly, bonds offer higher return than cash. The coupon interest rates on bonds are typically greater than the deposit rates paid by banks on saving accounts. There are risks and concerns about bond investment. First, bondholders have no ownership rights. Bondholders do not have specific privileges and rights as shareholders, and bondholders do not share in the company's profitability. Bondholders have no voting rights. They cannot influence a company's management by voting to elect the board of directors. Second, on average, the return on a highly rated bond is lower than the return on an excellent stock. Stocks involve greater risk, but with the opportunity of greater return. Bond rates are lower over time than the general return of the stock market. Third, interest rate risk. Bond prices move in the opposite direction of interest rates. Bond prices rise when interest rates fall and fall when interest rates rise. The bond portfolio could suffer from market price losses in a rising interest rate environment. The longer the term of the bond, the greater the price fluctuation or volatility that results from any change in interest rates. 
Fourth, inflation risk. Inflation refers to a general increase in prices of goods and services and a fall in the purchasing power of money. Since most bond interest payments are fixed from inception, their value can be eroded by inflation. The longer the term of the bond, the higher the inflation risk. For example, if prices rise by 3%, and the bond pays a 2% coupon, the bondholder has a net loss in real terms. On the other hand, stocks often stand a much better chance of outpacing inflation. Fifth, credit risk. Credit risk is the risk that an issuer will not be able to make interest or principal payments when they are due, and therefore default. Six, reinvestment risk. Reinvestment risk is the risk that future cash flow from bond, either coupons or the principal, will need to be reinvested at a rate lower than the expected rate of return assumed at the time of buying the bond. This usually happens when interest rates are falling. For example, if a bond has a yield to maturity of 5%, this assumes that the investor will be able to reinvest the coupon payments also at the same rate of 5%. Only then will the investor truly realize the yield to maturity on his investment. However, this may not always be possible. An investor may have to settle for a lower interest rate for these cash flows. Reinvestment risk is high for bonds with long maturities and high coupons. Lastly, prepayment risk. Prepayment risk occurs when a bond has a call feature. The call provision gives issuers the right to buy back the bond before maturity. Issuers are more likely to exercise their early redemption rights when interest rates are falling. So, Bondholders might have to reinvest principal at lower rates. Next, I'm going to introduce and explain some basic concepts about bond. The concepts are listed in this slide. These are common terms used in the bond market to describe the basic features of bonds. The par value is the principle of the bond. It is also known as nominal value or face value. For illustrative purposes, we generally assume a par value of a thousand. For example, one thousand pound, one thousand US dollar, one thousand ringgit. Although any multiple of value can be used, the par value generally represents the amount of money the issuer borrows and promises to repay on the maturity date. Bonds generally have a specified maturity date on which the power value must be repaid. Most bonds are issued with maturities of 10 to 30 years. The coupon payment is the specified dollars of interest paid periodically. Coupon interest is usually paid semi-annually. The coupon rate on a bond represents the percentage of the bond's power value that will be paid. The spread is the difference between the U on a bond and the U on a benchmark bond. The benchmark yield can be treasury yields or the London Interbank offer rate. A yield spread is the difference between yields on differing debt instruments of varying maturities, credit ratings, issuer, or risk level, calculated by deducting the yield of one instrument from the other. This difference is most often expressed in basis points or percentage points. 
one percentage point spread is equal to 100 basis points. Investors use the spread as an indication of the relative pricing or valuation of a bond. Generally, the higher the risk of a bond, the higher is yield spread. Yield spread can expand or contract, which signal changes in the underlying economy or risk level. next few slides, I'm going to introduce to you the different type of bonds. The most basic type of bond is a planned vanilla bond. They are bonds with embedded options and additional features. We shall exploit them one by one. A planned vanilla bond is the most basic or standard version of a bond. It is also known as straight bond or bullet bond. A planned vanilla bond pays interest at regular intervals and pays back the principal at maturity. It has no additional or special features compared to other bonds with embedded options. U.S. Treasury bonds issued by the government are examples of straight bonds. A zero coupon bond is a debt security that does not pay interest but instead trades at a deep discount, rendering a profit at maturity when the bond is redeemed for its full face value. The buyer of the bond receives a return by the gradual appreciation of the security, which is redeemed at face value on a specified maturity date. It is also called a pure discount bond or deep discount bond. The U.S. Treasury bills are an example of a zero-coupon bond. The difference between the purchase price of a zero-coupon bond and the power value indicates the investor's return. Reinvestment risk is not relevant for zero-coupon bonds, but interest rate risk is relevant for the bonds. A variable rate bond has floating coupon payments that are adjusted at specific intervals. Unlike traditional bonds that pay a fixed rate of interest, variable rate bonds have a floating coupon rate that resets periodically. Its coupon rate is adjusted according to a predetermined formula. Typically, the coupon rates are based on either the federal funds rate or the London Interbank Offer Rate plus an added spread. If interest rates fluctuate, the coupon rates of variable rate bonds adjust accordingly. When rates increase, coupon rates will increase, and when rates decrease, coupon rates drop accordingly. A callable bond, also known as redeemable bond, is a bond with an embedded call option. A callable bond gives the borrower the right but not the obligation to redeem the bond before the stated maturity date. When an issuer calls its bonds, it pays investor the call price together with accrued interest to date and from that point onwards stop making interest payments. If the issuer agrees to pay more than the face value amount of the bond when called, the excess of the payment over the face amount is called the call premium. In most cases, the call price is greater than the power value of the bond. Callable bonds may be beneficial to the bond issuers if interest rates are expected to fall. In such a case, the issuers may redeem their bonds and issue new bonds with lower coupon rates. A callable bond allows the issuing company to pay off their debts early. On the other hand, 
Callable bonds means higher risk for investors. If the bonds are redeemed, the bondholders will lose some future interest payments. This is also known as refinancing risk. Callable bonds also face reinvestment risk, which is the risk that investors will have to reinvest at lower interest rates if the bonds are called away. Due to the riskier nature of the bonds, callable bonds thus compensate investors for that potentiality and typically offer a more attractive interest rate or coupon rate due to their callable nature. Callable bonds are a good investment when interest rates remain unchanged. A putable bond is a debt instrument with an embedded put option. Putable bonds are directly opposite to callable bonds. Putable bonds give the bondholder the right, but not the obligation, to sell the bond to the issuer at a specified date prior to the bond's maturity date. This means the issuer has to redeem the bond before its maturity date, when the bondholders demand early repayment of the principal. The repurchase price is set at the time of issue and is usually at par value. The embedded put option acts as an incentive for investors to buy a bond that has a lower return. The put option on the bond can be exercised upon the occurrence of specified events or conditions or at a certain time. Convertible bonds are corporate bonds that can be exchanged for common stock in the issuing company. A bond's conversion ratio determines how many shares an investor will get. A convertible bond gives the holder the option to convert or exchange it for a predetermined number of shares in the issuing company. As convertible bonds can be changed into stock and may benefit from a rise in the price of the underlying stock, the yields on convertible bonds are lower. Gigs are bonds issued by the UK government more specifically, the debt securities are issued by the Bank of England and are listed on the London Stock Exchange. In conventional gigs, the government will pay the holder a coupon or cash payment every six months until maturity. Since the government is unlikely to default on a loan, gigs are considered to be lower risk than corporate bonds. A corporate bond is a debt security issued by a firm and sold to investors to raise capital. Investors who buy corporate bonds are lending money to the company issuing the bond. In return, the company makes a legal commitment to pay interest on the principal and return the principal when the bond matures. The backing for the bond is generally the ability of the company to repay, which depends on its prospect for future revenues and profitability. In some cases, the company's asset may be used as collateral. Corporate bonds are typically seen as somewhat riskier than government bonds, so they usually have higher interest rates to compensate for this additional risk. The highest quality and safest, lower yielding corporate bonds are commonly referred to as AAA bonds, while the least credit worthy are termed as junk bond. A sovereign bond is a debt security issued by a national government they can be denominated in foreign and domestic currency. Just like other bonds, the issuers of sovereign bonds promise to pay the investor a certain amount of interest for a stipulated number of periods and repay the face value on maturity. 
Sovereign bonds also have a rating associated with their credit worthiness. Bondholders demand higher yields from riskier bonds. The risks involve political risk, economic uncertainty, and exchange rate risks if the bonds are denominated in local currency. The government of a country with an unstable economy tends to denominate its sovereign bonds in the currency of a country with a stable economy. Euro bonds are bonds denominated in a currency other than that of their country of issue and trade. For example, bonds issued and traded in the UK denominated in dollars or yen. A more modern definition is a euro security is one which is simultaneously issued in the capital markets of several nations and that are outside the normal regulatory restrictions that apply in those countries. Despite its name, it has no particular connection to Europe or the euro currency. Euro bonds are frequently grouped together by the currency in which they are denominated. If a euro bond is denominated in US dollar, then it can be called a euro dollar bond. If it is denominated in Chinese yuan, then this would be named euro yuan bond. Since euro bonds are issued in an external currency, they are often called external bonds. Euro bonds are important because they help organizations raise capital while having the flexibility to issue them in another currency. A credit rating is a quantified assessment of the credit worthiness of a borrower in general terms or with respect to a particular debt or financial obligation. It is an evaluation of the ability and willingness of an entity, such as firms and governments, to fulfill its financial obligations in completeness within the established due dates. A credit rating also signifies the livelihood a debtor will default. Credit rating is conducted by rating agency. The industry is highly concentrated with the big three rating agencies, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Fish Rating. A higher ratings are usually associated with factors like larger firm size, lower debt ratios, higher profitability, and stable profits. Different rating agencies have a slightly different credit rating skills. In general, AAA is the highest possible rating that may be assigned to an issuer's bonds. AAA rated bonds have a high degree of credit worthiness because the issuers are able to meet financial commitments and have the lowest risk of default. BBB medium credit quality are considered investment grade. Bonds with lower ratings are considered speculative or often referred to as high yield or junk bonds. From the real world data, you can see that a bond with AAA rating has lower yield to maturity due to lower risk. On the other hand, bond with triple C rating has higher yield. Within the same rating skill, a treasury bond with triple A rating has lower yield than a corporate bond with triple A rating. Finally, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you have benefited from the presentation and content in this video. If you like this video, Please click like, subscribe or share. Thank you. See you and goodbye.